Hi, and, and welcome to the Education Roundtable. My name is Larry Petricaro, and I have with me tonight two guests, Deborah Prinz of the Achieve Foundation and Karen Weiland, who also was involved with the Achieve Foundation and also has more responsibilities in the school system. Deborah is the founder of the Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program and has been the Executive Director of the Achieve Foundation since 2002. And Karen is the Achieve Tutor Program Director and also is a school social worker. She's worked in the South Orange Maplewood School District since 1995 as the supervisor of the Elementary School Social Work Program and also as the director of the Parenting Center. So welcome to you both, and thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Deborah. why don't we start with a little bit of a background of the uh, Achieve Foundation and um, any of the other uh, people that are involved in it. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I must have made a mistake and missed that Amy Foreman is also a part of it, and I wanted to mention her. Mm -hmm. So Amy does the coordination of the volunteer, of the volunteer program. program. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to keep the record straight, there are three people actively and intimately involved with the uh, Chief <laughs> Foundation. So, let's start with a little bit of the background. About what the brought you to it, the Foundation? Um, well, actually, it's a, a little bit of a, of a complicated, uh, slightly complicated road. The uh, Chief Foundation started out as the South Orange Maplewood Education Foundation, which was founded in 1987. Uh, by a group of parents and other community members who felt that there should be a way to try to raise some money, extra money, to um, help the schools maintain their level of excellence. Um, and that went dormant for a while. And then, uh, in 1997, I started the Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program. Uh, and we got off to a great start, and after a few years, um, the financing of the program kind of changed from the standpoint of the school district. And uh, around the same time, uh, the superintendent had come to me, Dr. Hiroshek, uh, and asked if I might be able to get the foundation back on its feet. So um, in 1999, we uh, got the foundation back on its feet with a new board. We have a board of about uh, 20 to 25 people, and um, uh, and then in 2002, um, I took on the role of the executive director because by that time uh, there was really too much work to expect only a volunteer board to do, and the Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program became the first program of the Achieve Foundation, and um, we actually changed the name. Mm -hmm from that long South Orange Maplewood thing to uh, the Achieve Foundation in 2010. And we chose that name because the Volunteer Tutor Program was so popular and well known. And we thought, well, why don't we just go with success? So uh, we changed the name of the foundation to Achieve. And, and what was the um, kind of the uh, impetus to, to do that? I mean, did you see something that was needed in terms of uh, uh, some underserved uh, students, or what? Uh, I mean, it was obviously something that that you gave you the impetus. You talk about the foundation now, the, in general. Uh, the tutoring yeah. program the and tutoring the foundation. Well, both. Let's both. talk okay. about both. Well, the tutoring program. Um, I got the idea from that when I was a co-president of the HSA at South Orange Middle School with Myla Jacy, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I just was observing that there were so many students there who were struggling. And we lived in this community that was, you know, had so many people who uh, were fortunate enough to have wonderful jobs and, and careers. And um, I just thought, can't we get these two groups of people together, the kids mm -hmm. who need the help and the people who would be in a position to give the help. And so that's how the Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program was born. And uh, it, you know, really took off. As far as the foundation is concerned, um, we're known as a local education foundation, mm -hmm. and there are uh, foundations like this in many, many communities in New Jersey and throughout the country. And certainly in our school district, uh, the impetus for it was uh, the recognizing that uh, the school budgets were uh, getting tighter and tighter, and the expectations of the school district in terms of uh, accountability and so forth were getting higher and higher um, 
so little by little, some of our best programs were being cut. Some of our, you know, most enriching programs were being cut. Um, and uh, this group of people thought, well, let's see if we can't find a way to raise some money to not to subsidize the schools, but really to uh, enhance the schools mm -hmm. and to extend the learning experience for students. And we are uh, committed to ex uh, academic excellence and innovation and uh, educational equity uh, so that all students should have the benefit of the education that they receive in the district. You mentioned that the Volunteer Tutor Program was the first program you got involved in. What are some of the other programs that, that Well, you... we also uh, give out grants to teachers every year. We just gave out about $70,000 in grants to teachers uh, between money that we had allocated for it and additional money that um, donors gave uh, after we had given out the grants. There, was, mm -hmm. there were some that could still take some more money. And so we raised another $12,000 for those grants. Um, so that's a big program. And we also have uh, a, um, an administrator's grant program and uh, a professional development program called the Michelle Rickey mm. Teaching Fellowship, which was established in memory of, of, of Shelley Rickey, uh, who was a member of the Board of Education and um, and it's a, it's a summer um, uh, professional development uh, fellowship that's open to any teacher in the school district, and it's endowed. So uh, it's something that takes, is going to take place forever, I hope. Okay. And, and as the um, Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program Coordinator, if I have that that's right. Amy, program Amy director. Amy Foreman, director. has <laughs> <laughs> all these fine distinctions. So what, do you, what, are, what are some of the things that you have to do in light of that? Well, Amy and I work together on really looking at each school and working with um, the administrative staff at each school, understanding what their needs are, and then reaching out to the community and um, advertising in every which way. Amy is every place in the community. Mm -hmm. She's recruiting volunteers. But 70% of our volunteers come from the high school. So it not only is wonderful for the students who receive the tutoring services, we also have this just army of high school students who come to the elementary and middle schools and tutor their own peers at the high school. And they're, they're getting so much by being able to volunteer and do community service. So Amy and I, oversee the program. Amy does all the connecting with all the different units and, and parts of it. Um, and from the kind of the larger macro point of view, what we're interested in is really honing it and making it better and better and targeting, making sure we, we get the right students who, are, who can really benefit from our services, making sure that the tutoring that's happening is very well targeted so we can do some diagnostics and we could really um, work on holes in their foundational skills and that we stay very connected with teachers so that we can always get feedback on how we're doing. That, that's interesting. I, I didn't uh, realize that the majority, you're saying the majority of the tutors are actually high school students. Yeah, that's our, that's our biggest um, volunteer base. And I can't tell you what magic high school kids are to elementary. You know, they walk in and yeah, they are yeah, like, yes, yeah. <laughs> the high school kids are here. It's really exciting. And there's really really wonderful relationships that develop between the high school students and all the tutors and um, and the, the students who receive tutoring. Um, one of the coordinators, uh, site coordinators, was telling me this week that when the door opens up and the tutors walk in, like her first graders just charge, you're here, are they? you know? So there's all this excitement and um, so it's not only tutoring, but there's also this mentoring component that always goes with a tutoring relationship. So, so you, do you have a, um, a specific coordinator at each of the elementary yes. and the middle schools as well? Yes, yes. So, so where is most of the um, tutoring done? Is it done uh, in the elementary schools, the middle school, the high no, school? No, really, it's every school has a really robust program. The high school, of course, being our largest school has, what is it, three separate days that mm -hmm. you can receive tutoring services, so we try to be most flexible. 
Um, the elementary schools, tutors can come and they can either tutor during the school day um, and, or they could come for an hour after school once a week and um, tutor with the site coordinator there. Uh, so the, every school has a robust program that's linked really tightly with the administration of that school. Now, in terms of the, um, the kind of services you would offer at the elementary school or the middle school or the high school, um, you know, perhaps it just the way I was thinking about it, but I think in terms of the high school and specific subjects and tutoring a specific mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the elementary or the middle school, is it different? Are you, are you providing um, services from, from the tutors that are maybe more than just discipline specific? Yes, absolutely. And what we're working so hard on is to really work tightly with the teacher so the teacher can be very prescriptive and give us a sense of this is the area that, that this student needs right now. So it might be math, it might be language arts, it might be some of each, um, but, um, but down to, you know, really specific skills. And um, we're looking and thinking about even using some online programs that kind of give us rapid diagnostics and where the tutor and the student can work together um, so that the diagnosis of the, you know, the assessment goes straight into the tutoring um, and kind of guides it. I just want to add that all that Karen's talking about right now uh, is, is the reason that we were so happy that she came on board uh, two years ago to the program because until then, uh, I had been running the program with a pro program coordinator after after a while, um, and you know it was it was a, a, a well established program, and we had plenty of tutors, and the teachers were very appreciative. But because I am not an employee of the school district, I'm not part of the staff. I'm not an educator. Mm -hmm. um, I I was never able to really. Uh, uh, you know, create this this uh, integration that Karen has been able to do uh, of of really trying to tie the tutoring to the curriculum and to the needs of the, that specific student uh, and to the uh, goals of that particular school. And because she's involved with all of the schools on a daily basis, all the elementary schools um, and the middle schools too, right? Mm -hmm. um, she you know, has that intimate knowledge and, and, uh, and, and works with the people on the intervention teams and so forth. So it's just really uh, improved the program tremendously to have her working with us. And so the crux of it is really that what Deborah does is, is so important and so crucial, kind of the vision and, and steering it. And then it needs Amy coordinating it, and it needs um, it needs us to work in tight sync with with the teachers, with the administrators, and that's the way like a community comes together and really makes an excellent program. And I presume this is very well received by the uh, the, the elementary, the middle, the high schools. Everybody, it, it really supports it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to have to take a break. Um, we're about halfway through the show, so uh, if you could just. Uh, Stay with us, we'll be back in about a minute, and then we'll continue the conversation. Television is a powerful and influential medium that allows different groups the opportunity to produce programming that directly affects their own communities. Public, educational, and government access channels ensure that all people, regardless of race, age, gender, disability, religion, or economic status, have access to local government information and the use of a public communication forum. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. All right, well, welcome back to Education Roundtable. Um, we're talking with uh, Deborah Prinz and, and Karen Weiland, and we've also talked about Amy Foreman, unfortunately, who couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> but we were talking about uh, the tutors and what they do and the impact that they've had on the district and in the different elementary schools and the middle schools and in the high school. So we've talked a little bit about Achieve. You've given us a, a good idea of the background. Um, are you, is that uh, what you're doing so far, is that uh, something that's on its way to a vision you have, or, or, or are we at a point where 
you just want to refine what we're doing, or, or do you have another vision for what Are we you want to get to? Are you asking about the foundation or about the I keep forgetting program? that. <laughs> right. well, let's, let's do both. Let's start okay. with the foundation. Well, with the foundation, it's really interesting. Um, uh, um, a, uh, an, an administrator came into my office today and sat down and told me his great idea. This is my favorite part of my job. When okay. they come into my office and they sit down, and they say, do you have a minute? And they tell me their great idea. And, um, and you know, I, I kind of talked to him about the best way to bring it to us and, and the procedure and everything and gave him some ideas about how to shape it that would work the best for us, that it would fit with our mission the best. Um, and that is really, I hope, what will always define the foundation because we exist to support the schools. So the more the staff comes to us and asks mm -hmm. us, I always say, ask us for more money mm -hmm. uh, because the more they ask us for money, the better we understand what the needs are, whether it's the superintendent or you know, an administrator or a teacher. Uh, anyone, you know, really who's working with the children. And can I just add to yeah. that? Because what I want to say is that what that does for the staff is that whenever a staff member gets really excited about some educational idea or something they can do for the students, instead of feeling the sense of hitting a dead wall, mm -hmm. that conversation could always end with, we can ask achieve. So there's this sense of possibility infused throughout the staff of always knowing that if you have a great idea, there's a way to make it happen. So that's an amazing gift to give an entire school community. And um, uh, that is one of the three uh, objectives that we are always focused on, is, is make, creating innovation in the schools. And that's how it happens, because mm -hmm. teachers come with their great ideas. Uh, robotics, for example. Okay. Um, a teacher came, applied for a grant, Alan Tumalillo, he's well known in the district, and um, much more, better known now than, yeah. uh, since the robotics, the robotics program. Mm -hmm. And he got a relatively small, a few thousand dollars from us and started a robotics club. And that was, I think, four years ago, and it has morphed into I can't keep track, three clubs at the high school and one at each middle school and, and Lego leagues at the elementary mm -hmm. level. And this past year, the high school added robotics courses to the really? curriculum. And mm -hmm. that is a big deal because it's not easy to add a new course. Uh, and, and I believe that this year there are actually at least two sections, if not more, two or three. Um, so that's a perfect example yes. uh, of, of how we can just give a little money and it leads to change. And it grows all this change, yeah. Well, that's nice. I mean, that's, uh, it's wonderful to have that, that opportunity to innovate. I think that was one of the things mm -hmm. you talked about before. So you mentioned three things, that mm -hmm. innovations one. What were the other, I guess, the tutor? Oh, maybe well, I excellence, judge. educational excellence. So making sure that we are um, providing enrichment opportunities mm -hmm. for students and, and helping teachers to keep that bar high. Uh, and also making sure that all of the students are getting the benefits of the educational program. And so we sometimes do things, the Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program is a good example, uh, to make sure that uh, all of the children are, are able to take advantage of, of what the schools have to offer. So, so let's talk, uh, go back to the tutoring program. About mm -hmm. how many tutors do you have? I mean, you said 70% of them are from the high school, but, mm -hmm. but overall, how many? Tutors, do you have in the uh, in the organization? We have about three hundred tutors. No, we have <laughs> yeah, tutors. Yeah, it's uh, hard it's to remember. <laughs> I, I remember because it's it, <laughs> interestingly enough, it's been the same for many many years. So we have about one hundred and seventy-five to two hundred tutors a year, and, and about three hundred students, students get so. served every year. Now, what would in an ideal world, what, what would you like those numbers to be? I mean, uh, is, is, does that run well for you, or are you, would you like more? Or? We're working really hard at every school. If, a t if an administrator or principal, assistant principals, lets us know that they have a much higher need, mm -hmm. last year and the year before that, Tuscan School, for instance, let us know that they had a much higher need, AME turns it on. We will, we will find ways to make it happen. We will go to the high school and recruit even more. Um, 
sometimes you know, for a particular out. subject. For instance, mm -hmm. science and math at the high school, uh, especially the you know the higher level classes, it isn't as easy to get tutors to tutor those subjects. Um, and sometimes world languages and some of the things that are a little bit more you know limited. Uh, so Amy will go to the teachers, to the classes, and recruit tutors, uh, more tutors. So where there's a need, you know, we, we would definitely try. And it also really has created a kind of a culture um, of helping in the schools. Uh, we now have quite a few middle school students who are tutoring. Really? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and so, and and yeah. one of the teachers mentioned the idea of just recently. I haven't told this to Amy yet, of possibly having uh, students come into study halls in the high school and help other students. Mm -hmm. So it's created a sort of culture, I think. Yeah, and there's been a wonderful thing at the middle schools where um, we now have two site coordinators at each middle school, and we have achieved two days a week. Um, because we're recruiting 8th graders and 7th graders and having mm -hmm. them do peer tutoring. Um, and we started it, I think it was two years ago, mm -hmm. you know, kind of tentatively to see if that age difference would work. And it's been a smashing success. Mm -hmm. um, and we couldn't be prouder of uh, middle school kids who are tutoring and the students who receive the tutoring are using it. Um, and so we're using that as our little laboratory to see what ways we can play with time. What if we did it two days a week? Is there a critical mass of time that would really give enough support to make an even more robust difference? And um, so we're, we're playing with that and even thinking of three days a week at the middle school. Um, so we're always trying to see, you know, what, what can we do that would, you know, kind of be a force multiplier. Well, are we, do you, in your opinion, do you think you're reaching most of the kids who, uh, could use tutoring, or is this an area where well, you really like to Well, I can stand? say that last year, uh, Amy, to her great credit, uh, I think had, I don't know, two or three students who had requested tutors who didn't get them. Mm. And I can say that that is a huge improvement from my days being the coordinator because uh, I, I was not able to achieve that, uh, that level of participation. Uh, but I think all of our systems have improved in the meantime, but she really stays with it. Um, so that indicates that we are reaching most of the students who need help. That's good. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that can change, and I think we just have to, you know, not have a, a, a set idea about mm -hmm. how many there ought to be. Well, what kind of commitment does a, a tutor have to make? And, and so the commitment really is, it, it's nothing daunting. Um, the commitment is to at least once a week for an hour and to go to our training. We put together a really mm -hmm. wonderful training. You come, you have dinner together, and then um, we have our very best teachers really give you a real sense of how to approach the tutoring process and give you like crash courses on content taking you back to math skills and language art skills and how to approach it and making you understand that really you know how to do this. Um, and the site coordinators will support you through anything that you need. Um, so really it's just altruism, commitment, and coming once a week and also um, coming to the training. And you do provide training. Oh, we yes, do you provide absolutely. Training. Yeah, it's we're a very proud of that. Uh, that's you know been since day one. Uh, we've had trainings, and they have really developed and changed and, and, and kind of adapted to the needs of the program and of the schools, uh, and, and they're run by our own teachers. Well, that seems to be very positive that, that you, you're, you're not so static, that, that you've been able to, I guess, what do they say, go with the flow. You've been able to adapt, to evolve, I mean, and, I, and I would think that's critically yeah. important because I think... Uh, I think change. it depends on us really being like very, very tuned in to each school's need every year because it changes. And if we work in real coordination, then we're, we're able to adjust to meet the needs of that school for that year. And, and all these wonderful ideas. I mean, it was Rob Schmidt at the middle school who came to us and, and said, my eighth graders can do this, and he brought 40 eighth graders for that. <laughs> he had just an army of eighth graders doing tutoring twice a week. 
Um, so, and that let us know that we could open up this whole new um, way of doing it. So, um, it changes all the time. Well, is there any particular uh, need in terms of tutoring, in terms of subjects? Uh, yes. You know, <laughs> and that is? Math and science, math and science, everybody out there who uh, have expertise in math and science, especially at the high school level, um, come volunteer and share your skills and talents. Um, but there is, you know, anybody who just wants to, um, wants to tutor, we can use them. Now, of the, the um, non-school tutors, the, I, I mean, the adult community, mm -hmm. community, the yeah. adults, that, thank you, the adults. Um, do they tend to uh, stay with the program a very long time? Once mm -hmm. they get in, they just... Yeah. Uh, well, um, I, I want to uh, give a little shout out to okay. uh, Franz <laughs> Dusek, who is uh, tutoring at the high school every Saturday morning. And it, it seems to me he's been coming for at least 12 years. You know, I, I really have lost count. We could probably find out, and he probably knows. <laughs> Uh, and I think two of his own kids, when they were in high school, were tutors. Uh, and he tutors math and science. He tutors physics and math uh, every Saturday morning. And that's a great time uh, to see the best of the Achieve Volunteer Tutor Program because everyone is there. The little kids are there. The high school kids are there. The adults are there. And... Uh, you can't tell among the high school kids who's tutoring whom. Really? Well, because high school kids come in all sizes and, you know, uh, really aren't sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we do. They, we have a number of tutors, of adult tutors, who come back year after year. Well, we only have a little over a minute. Um, so what we'll do is try to put information for people who might be interested mm -hmm. um, on the screen so that they can contact you. Uh, but maybe you could give us an example of one or two successes that, that, that come to mind from the program. Do you want me to? Go ahead. Um, <laughs> well, you know, one simple story is just, um, Amy was telling me today, just the joy of having a mom call and say, oh my goodness, this really works. <laughs> he was like getting a C minus and now it's a high B and thank you. And it just feels so good when that happens. Another story, an elementary um, site coordinator was telling me about um, a first grader who was really not wanting to go to school, feeling so unsuccessful in school, starting to, you know, kind of balk it every morning, I don't want to do this, I hate it. And then this relationship developed and this magic, and all of a sudden there's something wonderful and somebody who's just waiting to be there with you, and her whole, the whole attitude changed. Um, and, you know, school became something that, that they were looking forward to. So, so those sorts of very concrete stories mm -hmm. of grades changing and those just kind of social-emotional feelings about coming to school and, and that attitude change. So it's the whole spectrum. We uh, do a, an evaluation at the end of the year, and I wish everybody could read some of the statements that the students make about how they feel about their experience in being tutored because well, they're great. I guess with that, we're, we're going to have to close. We've run out of time. So if anyone is interested, and hopefully there are you out there that will be interested and can help, especially in these areas of math or science, you know, they'll, you, please take a look at the information, the uh, contact information that we're providing. And uh, thank you for joining Education Roundtable. <laughs>